I conducted an extensive forensic examination of the defendant. We met twice for several hours each time. So you can refute the defense's expert witness? I think he could very well have been suffering from a psychotic break. But there's nothing to back up his story, medically or factually. I researched the potency of the edible that he claims to have eaten. And you believe it's scientifically possible that the cannabis caused him to experience irrational thought, hallucinations? He's never exhibited any signs of mental illness in the past. It doesn't mean it didn't happen now. Look, it's rare, but there are a number of factors that can contribute to this type of reaction. In Erickson's case, his age could be a factor. Teenagers who ingest high concentrate THC products open themselves up to the possibility of a psychotic break. Have you ever seen this before? Not personally, but it has been documented, and I've read studies. Did Erickson seem to be malingering at all? I administered the standardized assessments for malingering, including the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. In my opinion, he was telling the truth. I've researched the potency of the THC he claims to have ingested, and I met with the defendant for approximately two hours, got a full medical history, and... It's scientifically possible that the cannabis caused him to experience irrational thoughts and paranoid delusions. Possible that pot can make someone kill another human being. It sounds far-fetched, but we're talking about pot. This sure as hell isn't the pot I grew up with. Back in the 90s, the THC level in marijuana was below 2%. Now, some dispensaries are selling dabs that are 80 or 90% THC. Put that in a vape and smoke it, it can absolutely trigger a psychotic episode. If I'm being honest, he seemed like a good kid who smoked some really strong marijuana and lost his damn mind.